Hello guys, this is Alex from the Masters of Ultrasound channel again, and today I'm here with a new pocket ultrasound device review. Today's device is the new model from Eagle V Ultrasound, the high frequency linear scanner. This one is a little different, since you'll probably remember back in 2021 when I first presented their 3 in 1 device, an all terrain able to scan either the heart with low ultrasound frequencies like 2.5 MHz or the carotid artery with bigger frequencies like 10 MHz. It was a blast back in that time, and lots of you gave me very valuable feedback, for which I am so grateful. So, today's device is a little bit different. First, let's go with the unboxing. So here it is, the box directly from the package. Removing apart the cover, there is a white box. After opening it, the first thing is the warranty card, which is 18 months, not extendable. The quick operation guide, and the probe itself. In a shiny dark grey, it's really beautiful and stylish in my humble opinion. Whoa! <laughs> then, below this black foam there is a USB-C wireless charger. Also an adjustable stand for the phone or tablet, which is very practical. and USB to USB-C adapters. In my case there are two, I imagine one is for the wireless charger and the other is to charge the probe itself directly. Very very light, only 160 grams or 0.35 pounds, and so small that it fits in every pocket, with just 15 per 6 per 2 centimeters, with a probe footprint of 24 millimeters. Waterproof IPX5 certified, it has a 192 element linear probe able to reach a frequency range of 16 to 20 MHz. So it is specifically designed for very shallow structures from 1 cm up to 4 cm and therefore it is mainly suited for number 1. Skin and subcutaneous tissue such as dermatology and plastic surgery number 2. Guiding procedures like static medicine injections, nerve blocks, guiding the thoracosynthesis and number three, superficial organs examinations, such as thyroid glands, joints, breasts, or neck arteries. Regarding connectivity, it is wireless, connecting to the smartphone or tablet via the wireless USG flash, available for free in the iOS 9 or later or Android 12 or later app stores, without subscriptions. The Pro creates a Wi-Fi network findable in the Wi-Fi section, but you don't need other Wi-Fi to be able to connect. The battery lasts for almost 90 minutes of scan time, based on the imaging mode used. Bear in mind, the Doppler strain it quicker than B mode. As usual with pocket devices, it heats up quite quickly, so no more than 15 to 20 minutes of continuous scan, and the battery can be fully charged in less than 2 hours via a wireless charger or wired through this USB-C port. The app lets you save anonymized images and video clips in JPG. PNG, MP4 and ICOM formats directly to the iPhone in this case, and hence it is easy to share with other people without the need for a subscription, cloud or a special app. It comes with the following imaging modes at no extra expense. B mode, M mode, color Doppler, power Doppler and pulse wave Doppler. After testing it, I must admit Doppler modes are set with greater sensitivity. They detect even the tiniest red blood cell moving. <laughs> I understand the purpose of the device is the patient's safety and therefore by detecting each and every tiny vessel it can avoid errors in injection. However, for people not used to these Doppler settings like me, it can be a little overwhelming at first. Not a biggie though. It also offers some advanced tools such as an automatic vessel measurement function and an in-plane and out-of-plane needle guidance for interventionism. And now let's have a look at the images obtained. In this case, I contacted with some dermatologists from my hospital, San Pau Hospital in Barcelona, to get some help with the images. So thank you to Dr. Eva Villarraza and Fabia Torres. I also want to mention that the phantom used is from the company Biotme. You'll be able to find all the links and social media in the description box. In this first patient with hydradenitis suppurativa, we can see the B mode of the inflammatory nodules. Remember, they classify in Harley stages 1 to 3 based on if they are abscesses, sinus tract, tunnels, or the degree of scarring. Then, color Doppler images of these nodules with the increased vasculature due to inflammation. Then, a healthy nail bed. Have a look at the B mode in the red box and how the different parts can be seen. 
Remember this image when we compare to that of a real patient. You know I'm an independent reviewer and want to show everything, not just the best part. Now an ungual psoriasis patient. Note the thickened irregular nail plate, the loss of normal layered appearance, and the red arrow is pointing to the hypoechoic nail matrix. Not the first hypoechoic zone, which is just hell. Stepping to the second chapter, which is interventionism, this is the phantom used, not in the red box the contents, we will focus on an abscess. So there we have it localized in the B mode image. Now imagine we want to inject a needle into an abscess to drain it or inject corticosteroids into a hydratinated suppurative nodule. We have two techniques, out of plane, in the pictures on the left side, and in plane, in the video on the right side. Comparing both, note how the needle is seen as a point on the left, increasing lateral resolution, and as a string on the right side, increasing depth resolution. Finally, watch the corticoids being injected in the bottom of the nodule on the right side of the image. A comparison with the gold standard, I want to say that needle visualization in the eagle view is not bad compared with an expensive machine, as you can see here. Note the red strings covering the needle visualization. Finally, the third chapter, I will focus on neck and wrist vessels. Here you can see a color doppler from a carotid short axis, as well as jugular vein and adjacent vasculature, especially in the image on the right side. Have a look at this artery and imagine you want to know if this is arterial, venous or capillary. Look what happens when we place the pulse with Doppler box there. The life flow curve confirms us it is arterial. Also have a look at the different flow waveforms between jugular veins slow and more linear versus carotid arteries pulsatile pulse. Here's a frozen image with Doppler's velocities measurements. And another way to check if it is venous or not, by just compressing it. Same with the longitudinal axis. Pulse wave Doppler allows to differentiate between venous on the left and arterial on the right. Now a radial artery short axis, surrounded by veins. Have a look at how they disappear when compressing. And with the increased sensitivity of the power Doppler mode, watch how peripheral vasculature arises between wrist tendons and muscles when sliding the probe laterally on the left side of the screen and medially on the right side. Again, as before, with the live pulse wave Doppler, we can check if the suspected vessel has an arterial waveform or venous, or any at all, and it is just a tendon. Same with the radial longitudinal axis. On the left, a color Doppler image to confirm it is a vessel and not a tendon. And on the right, note the absent waveform of the pulse wave Doppler until the box is inside the vessel, thus tracing an arterial waveform. So all that you've heard from this device for just $3,999. And I managed to get a 10% discount code with the letters MOU10 from Masters of Ultrason 10% discount. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments everything that you think about this device, if, whether you try it, whether you have good opinions, bad opinions, whatever. And let me know if I can help you with anything. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye.